Are you ready to scale your business in a way that's aligned with your soul and profitable? I'm Casey Rossi, a business and leadership coach. I've been a full-time entrepreneur for 30 years and love business. I help conscious leaders increase their impact and optimize their lives. Join me each week for tips and deep conversations on cultivating confidence, increasing your visibility, elevating your vibration, and leading with purpose without burning out. Let's go. Welcome, welcome back to the show. It is that time of the year again. Whether you feel like you slogged through 2022 or it's whizzed by, it's that time again when we get to say goodbye to the past and hello to the future. Before you barrel into any newness, it's an effective practice to reflect not only on what you'd like to have less of, but what you'd like to have more of as well. A little mind math, if you will, so you know exactly where you're going. So let's dive in. Let's start with the physical. Is there something within your physical body that you'd like to change? Now, I'm not talking about the metrics, although if that's important to you, then of course it's valid. I'm thinking more of like letting go of pain, discomfort, hiding, and sleeplessness. What isn't serving you any longer? What is it time to say goodbye to? Maybe you've held on to a specific routine that you know isn't really the best for you. For me, it's gluten. I know this already as I'm sure you have a couple of things that are coming front and center when you think about this topic. When I think about my physical desires of being free and light and fluid, consuming something that makes me feel bloated and tight and causes stiff joints is absolutely out of alignment. Of course, with any change work, we have a choice and that's the beauty of being the highest rung on the evolution ladder, it is the opportunity to exercise free will. When we are ready to shift, when the pain or discomfort is greater than the craving or urge, then we will practice a new way. Bringing awareness to anything is, of course, the first step. You know this. You know this if you're listening to this. You know this if you have spent any time in the personal and or spiritual development space, bringing awareness to anything is of course the first step. So not in the vein of guilt and shame, but in the spirit of illumination and first steps or next steps, what would you like to let go of that would serve your physical self? All right, next. Let's look at your mental body, your feeling and emotional space. What qualities do you hope for? What do you want to embody more of? What would you like to say hello to? Being grounded, non-reactive or less reactive, more compassionate, loving, patient? You tell me. And what do you have to let go of to really allow that positive quality to step forward just a little bit more. Maybe it's bye-bye comparison, judgment, and jealousy. Now, we all have little gremlins that pop up from time to time. Perhaps there are some shadow patterns that are so routine that you don't even recognize that they aren't serving you. That happens a lot. It becomes our normal And it could be innocent. It could be such little things. It could be scrolling on social as the first thing you do when you open your eyes in the morning. And then you see glam pics of people you follow or you see others making 30K in 30 days. It is enough to spiral down into self-doubt or worse. So what measures help you install healthy boundaries that protect your mental health? It could be limiting your time on the platforms or having no social before 10 a.m. so you can focus on your most important things before getting sucked in to other people's lives and reels and agendas. Only you know what's hindering feeling fully alive and expansive. That thing that comes right to your mind, that thing. Take committed steps to rein it in. 
Will it take discipline? Of course. Will you be perfect day in and day out? Of course not. Is it worth it anyway? Hell yeah. This past week, I found myself spending way more time on my phone than usual. Posting some, yes, but consuming a lot. No wonder why some evenings my neck was feeling so wonky and my energy levels were in a slump. It's so easy to get allured by all the buzz, ads, pics, posts, quotes, vids, and it certainly can be overwhelming for our nervous systems. Remember how you want to feel and match up your actions accordingly. That may sound like a gross oversimplification, and if we aren't talking about clinical diagnoses, it can be as simple as that. One step at a time. Hello, new wonderful things. Goodbye stuff that weighs me down. All right, next is spirituality. What was missing in 2022 for you in this department? Did you feel like you could lean on your faith? Did you have an outlet to hand over the hard stuff? Were you connected to a community that supported you and just got you? Did you take time to develop a relationship with your inner world? If you did, awesome. What can you double down on so you ensure the new year serves you at an even greater or deeper or more profound level? And if not, what's one thing that you can research or add that can help you feel more fulfilled in this area? There is no one right way. There is no one right path. You have to do what feels in alignment to you, what makes your soul sing. And if that feels so airy-fairy or elusive or like you're trying to grasp sand, know that you're not alone and you can just take one baby step towards this space and test something out and see how it feels. You don't have to be bound by a label or any dogma. That is such a great difference between religiosity, if that's a word, (laughs) and spirituality. Huge, huge difference. So for me, I don't know who I'd be without my spiritual path. I'm sure you know by now I've been meditating every day since 1990. And that's true. And also, I could feel more fulfilled in this space. I'm not sure if I'm going to add local charity work or do something more private and intimate that will strengthen my faith even more. But I do know that it will be top of the list as I move forward and I tweak. What about you? All right, financial. What do you want to let go of when it comes to the financial section? What do you want to say goodbye to? Sara Nara, instability, lack and limitation, money mindset, Think about it for a minute. What comes to your mind when you think about money and security? Moreover, what happens in your body when you think about that? Do you have a tightness in your chest? Do you have butterflies in your stomach? Do you feel like the weight of the world is on your shoulders when you even think about money? Do you crave consistent cash flow? Regular vacations with your sweetie pie? Business or health insurance, so you have a sense of security. It's all welcome, right? What is one small thing that will move you in the direction of achieving what you really want, of really welcoming in aspects that you want to greet with a smile? What do you want to say hello to? For me, since I turned 50 this year, I'd like to start really thinking and planning and contributing to a retirement plan. I've been an entrepreneur for over three decades, and most of my fellow solopreneurs will tell you that IRAs and future planning typically aren't in the business plan. But as I see my inner circle who are ahead of me in years, retiring, winding down, I really get this sense of, holy smokes, like, This is what it looks like when someone's planned for that stage of life. And this is what it looks like when someone doesn't. And I definitely want the former. So what about you? 
Is abundance on your docket? What are you committed to, to ensuring radical results? Inking it is so very important when we ink it and we put it front and center, it really becomes an attainable goal versus a pipe dream that fades away as fast as science has proven our New Year's resolutions do. When we put our top priorities in front of ourselves on a daily basis and check our weekly progress against them, we are insured for far greater success. That's just proven. You know in order to achieve anything great, we need a combination of grit, that undying passion to persevere, that strong willingness and scrappiness to take bold action, and grace, self-love, self-forgiveness, compassion, communication, and humility. What mindset will you cultivate to strike that dynamic duo of grit and grace? What do you need in place that will help remind you of not only your goals, but your greatness? What plan do you want to develop in case things go off the rails or self-sabotage creeps in? And let's face it, things will go off the rails. There's a lot that's in your control, but there's also several things that aren't in your control. Who will you reach out to for support? What will you do to allow yourself to be able to fall back on a solid enough foundation that you can rebalance, relaunch, regroup when that happens. So important. And how will you schedule yourself before burnout even enters the picture? That part's really important as well because it's not all about the go, go, go and the kind of just squeezing through and pushing through. How much white space will you have? So there is time to devote to those inner practices. So there is time to even write about what we're talking about. My hope is that you will take the time for yourself to marinate and journal on everything we're talking about. Please don't just let this be a 10-minute podcast that sounds really good for everyone else. Take the time to embody the words So you see really beautiful transformational change. You see and feel more over yourself getting closer and closer to who you want to be, who you're meant to become. It can be as simple as passing on just one hour of television and silencing the noise to turn within and document what you want to create more of and what you are dedicated to letting go of physically, physically, emotionally, spiritually, and financially. I am cheering for you all the way. I want you to be so in love with the life that you are blessed to architect. And if you try something on and it pinches just like clothes, you can take it off and try something else. Isn't that awesome? You are never stuck. You are never alone. And most importantly, you have everything within you to create brilliance. Be the shining star. Be the person that other people look up to, not to get followers or for admiration, but to create a movement of change agents and status quo disruptors. Because when we go for it, it sparks motivation in others so they go for it as well. So exciting. On a whole, we are ready for change globally. It's happening slowly and surely. We are ready to use our voices and speak up for ourselves and for those who don't yet have the strength to do so on their own. Say hello to the light leader that you are destined to be. To a new year, my friend, that's filled with all of your favorites. Until next time, breathe joy. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you did, share it with a couple of friends. Positive messages that inspire should be spread. And don't keep your revelations a secret. DM me anytime 
with what comes up for you when you hear an episode, whether it's to share an aha or to reach out for support. I am here for you. Okay, that's all for now. Thank you so much for listening and being a part of my world.